would love to get one take where I don't fuck it up. I don't think it's in the mountains. Neil Young and Joni and friends. The person I was kind of seeing in New York at the time um, actually was the one to drive me back to New Hampshire um, so that I could quarantine. I called the person I was seeing and was like, I would not ask you. I actually called them, they didn't answer. So I texted them a novel and I was like, you can totally say no. <laughs> that day, several hours later, we were in the car on the way to New Hampshire. I forget what we were talking about on the car ride, but he said something like, oh, and he said something like really dismissive. It's nothing to write home about. And I was like, I forgot about that phrase. Something to write home about, nothing to write home about. And I said out loud, I will use that in a song. He left the next day and I think it was either that day or the day after while I was in the hotel. Right away, I, sat down and wrote this song. And I wrote the last verse first, which is ironic because I was saying, kind of hope that I get sick as if I wasn't completely, totally unwell at the time. I first wrote that last verse. Kind of hope that I get sick. Or maybe just bump my head. To put my faith in morbid threats I bet you'd stay until my dying breath Maybe then I'll shut my mouth Someone to write home about Someone to write home about And I wrote those first few lines without the tag first. I always say like as a musician, my guitar playing is always like running to catch, panting to catch up to my writing. Um, because I'm, I like, I'm already thinking so many steps ahead with my writing. And then my guitar playing is like, wait, we barely know the guitar part yet. I had that theme, like something to write home about. Um, and I actually called my dad and I was like, I have this idea and like, I wrote these lines and it goes like this and I want to use this line. And, and so I'm like, I don't know, I'm talking about someone. So maybe it like zooms out, you know, like maybe it starts bigger picture and then goes to this one person. And, you know, we're like, this was like the quickest phone call I've ever had in my life that we like just immediately were bouncing so many ideas off each other. And then we were like, okay, it's somewhere, something, someone. And I was like, cool, hung up immediately. I called him up 10 minutes later. I FaceTimed him and I was like, so here it is. Here is the song. There's a part of me that wants things. Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair. I think if I were in a musical, this would might be my I want song. You know, the, the lead, there's like always a chance in a musical for a lead to be like talking to the audience like, Re, you know, confessing what their deepest desires are. And I think this ended up being that for me. You know, this like deep ache for a sense of belonging, um, be it the, the place that I want to end up, phys like location wise, um, success in my career, whatever that means, mm -hmm. and whatever that takes to get there. And then finding somebody to be with me at the end of the day. And through really brutal, scary times um, that I was going through at that time and we were beginning to all go through collectively. I can't see perfect in one thing I can see leaving everything I've ever cared The recording for that song, Max Maybe did such I a beautiful job. Fear. We, together, that piano, little punky piano solo in the middle was a completely different solo. And we sat down and we like literally took apart note by note and rewrote the entire thing together. It is kind of ironic to me that I wrote this entire song about like truly what I wanted at a time when I couldn't attain any of that because 
I was completely out of control, afraid that we were all going to die, that all my friends and family and loved ones, I couldn't see ever again or, you know, thinking the worst. And then coming out with this song that's like, such a like wishful thinking song. And yeah, it's definitely the most vulnerable. I could write about relationships all day and share the most intimate details of my relationship and I don't care at all. But there's something so terrifying about saying like, I want this thing and I would do this to get it. Total desperation and wishing like somebody with a savior complex will like come around the corner and if that's what it takes, then great. Maybe then I'll have it figured out. Something to write home 